Hi everyone! Welcome paint partiers! We're going to be starting in just a moment on tonight's painting. Um, we're going to be doing uh, the uh, yellow finches on a birch tree. It's like blossoming with lots of spring bright beautiful colors but it'll be nice for this uh, fall day. It's not fall yet I guess. It's technically still summer so <laughs> it's all good. So yeah as you guys um, jump on just say hey. Let me know that you are watching and you can see everything and if you notice any random um, links appear in the comments please don't click them don't click any links in the comments there are some random scammers that are going to be trying to get your personal information and uh, don't give it to them because <laughs> this is free this is the event I'll get started in um, just a little bit after six all right oh nice we're getting lots of people joining fantastic so just for anyone who's joining, in case any of the weird uh, scammers try to come on, they might put some links in the comments. Don't click them. Don't click them. Okay? Hi! Hi, Dee! Nice to see ya! Hi, Ranny! Awesome! So glad you guys are here. So yeah, just stop in and say hi, let me know, and we're just gonna get ready. So our painting today is our uh, yellow finch finches on the uh, birch tree, and it's like blossoming with bright pink color is really pretty. So I'll show you guys the picture for anyone who, well, I'm sure most of you know already, but there you go. So that's what we're gonna paint today. So if you haven't already, grab um, a screenshot from the post that I put up yesterday. So I always announce the winners on the Tuesday prior in the afternoon usually, um, once you guys vote. This one had a huge percentage of the vote. It was like, I looked at the comments and I thought, okay, yeah, that pretty much won <laughs> hands down. <laughs> so it was like 68% of the vote this week. Um, so grab the um, the image, you can have it available to you um, if you need a reference. Um, when I go through this, I do paint pretty quickly for some people who are starters. This is what we're painting. I'm holding it up right now. Yeah, that's what we're painting. <laughs> um, so if you find that I'm going too quickly, uh, the videos are available for free afterwards, so um, once it's done, it'll be posted um, and you'll be able to watch them whenever you'd like to. Um, and I have a bunch of other videos that are still there. There's uh, 30 videos that are available. It's okay. Um, it's about 30 videos that are available. This is our 31st paint party, so it's very exciting. All right. Hi, guys. Oh, my gosh. So many people from so many places. This is all amazing. Hey, everyone. Fantastic. So yeah, so everything will be there for you. So I'm painting as always on a canvas board. So it is um, an 11 by 14 canvas board. I'm going to be doing it in the landscape rotation, portrait rotation. That's how we're going to be painting today. I like the canvas board because they're just easier to store essentially um, and they're pretty good prices to be honest. I have my water container ready to go. I have my um, palette and I have some brushes. I use predominantly three brushes. So I'll have like a, a larger, a fine and like a medium one. And that's really just in relationship to the size of your canvas. Um, I'm not very technical because I am not an expert. I just really like painting and I like to share it with you. So I don't know all the proper names for things, but I use a big one, a medium, and a thin one. <laughs> I also have some other backup ones. Sometimes I like to switch up into them depending on your feel. So I'm a strong believer of you can paint with any supplies. All my paints from the dollar store and we're going to create a beautiful painting with that. Um, if you have fancier paints, it's going to even look better, I bet. <laughs> so it's all good. Oh, there's a scammer. <laughs> I delete you. Oh, I should have blocked him. Shoot. Okay, if he comes back on, I gotta block him. All right, if you guys see any of those as I'm talking, um, please um, just let other people know in case I don't catch it. So if you see it pop up, like that, I didn't block him. That was my issue. Hold on, block. Now we're good. All right, so if you guys see any of those ones pop up that try to like get you to click a link to pay money or do whatever they are doing, um, just make a comment to other people don't fall victim to it because um, I may not catch them as I'm starting, okay? So that's, I need your guys' help for that. Okay, um, let us start putting some paint down on my palette. So if you haven't already, grab a copy of the picture or a screenshot from the um, post from yesterday so you have it available to you. What we're gonna do is we are gonna start, as always, let's talk through where we're gonna start first. We're gonna start with the background here. Hey, Sage. Hi, guys. Hi, Laura. Oh, I love it. I see all the familiar names. 
Can you still see them? Okay, I can't, um, I don't know why it's doing that. What is this? Okay. I only saw the one come up. If there's a way for you to click on it, I don't know if you can click to say report it or whatnot. If you can do that, that'd be great. Um, I only saw the one, the one come up. Well, he came up twice. Eh. Anyways, let's not let that ruin our fun. All right, so um, the back here, so we're gonna start with the blue background. So what you wanna start off with, you wanna get blue paint on your palette and white. Um, we're gonna use quite a bit of white, I think, to lighten it up. And we're gonna start with that. So let's get that onto our palette. <laughs> All right, and actually with me today, my um, my mother-in-law is actually with me today. She's been visiting, so she's here with me. She's painting along. Say hi, Linda. Hi. So I'm Linda's excited. here. Yeah. <laughs> so she's excited, and she'll be sharing her painting as well, which is really great. Um, yeah. So yeah, we'll have lots of fun today. So if you hear me talking to someone, I'm actually not talking to myself this time. I'm actually talking to someone else today. Um, okay, good. So let's get quite a bit of blue, and let's get quite a bit of white. Okay, and I'll show you that too. Okay, so I have quite a bit of white, quite a bit of blue, we're good to go. All right, and so the first thing I'd like to do, because we're gonna try to get a lot of coverage down on this, and I'm gonna switch the camera over to this in a moment. Hey, Lucy! <clears throat> hey guys, awesome. And um, I think it's Emma too. I think Emma's the one who paints, my 11 year old masterpiece lady. Um, all right, so we're gonna start off. Sorry, I really like dry talking to you guys. Okay, we're gonna start off with the thing. We're gonna wet the whole canvas first, just with water, um, just to get a good coverage going so we can have a nice um, base for us to paint on. Okay, so let's get this changed up so you can see my canvas. <clears throat> oh shoot, and something I forgot to do. I meant, I know for some of you guys, ah, there goes another one block absolutely Kathleen yeah it'll be available afterwards so you'll be able to watch this whenever you like all my videos are still available online okay so one thing I forgot to do was I know when I paint yay um, when I paint it's um, sometimes it's flipped from the image that you see and I forgot to do it this week which I'll try to do it from now on I'll try to post the image flipped as well so you have it both one side and both the other side so it makes sense I just forgot to do that this week so I apologize for that but Anyways, let's start, get some water on this. Okay, don't soak it. You don't want it to be dripping, but you want it to be wet. So that when we start painting, everything's gonna go so smooth and it's gonna blend so nice on this, okay? All right. And if you have any questions along the way, pop them in the comments, I'll keep an eye. And if someone else sees it and if they have an answer, please feel free to help each other out or share any of your best practices, anything that's working well for you. Okay. Okay, so everything is nice and wet. Yay. All right. So now what we're going to do is, um, I feel like we're going to get a really dark shadow on this today. Anyways, I'm going to have to move my light in a bit. All right. So <clears throat> let's start off. We can go either which way. I'm going to start off darker and then I'm going to build in to make it a little bit lighter I think today um so that's how I think I'm going to start it off but now as I said it I kind of want to do the opposite sorry <laughs> okay no scratch that let's start lighter and go darker okay sorry sometimes my I, I change it in the middle of the process okay so right in the middle you're going to get white on your big huge paintbrush and let's just start putting white in the center you're not even going to be able to see it I think I'm excited to get color on here. So I was like, let's go with blue, but no, let's go with white. Okay. So let's start kind of in a circle, kind of plot out where we want that center light to be. And you want to make it a bit bigger than what we actually, where it's actually going to land. It's going to be pretty small in the middle there. Okay. Okay. So now let's get a little bit of blue and let's go right on top. Now, a few things are going to happen when you do this. You'll see, obviously, the blue all of a sudden is not as bright as it was. And that's because um, we have the water. So it already has, it's already wet, so it's not as opaque. 
Okay, let's just kind of keep going in a circular fashion. You don't want to bring the blue too far in the middle because you want to keep that pretty white. But again, if you do end up doing that, it's okay because we're using acrylic and once it dries, it's very forgiving. And we're gonna keep building out. Okay, so now just go with the blue again. And we're gonna bring it out and give it a nice circle around. The brush I use has pretty hard bristles and I really, I like the hard bristles on it. I feel like it also gives me texture sometimes, but it also at times pulls the paint. And this is also like the first kind of go ahead at it. We're gonna be putting another kind of layer on top of this. So if you're doing it and it's streaky, that's fine. I'll keep an eye out and make sure I catch anyone else. Sometimes some of the comments don't come up right away. So if you write something and I don't respond to you, it might be because it doesn't pop up. And sometimes, and I don't really know why that happens. But I do try to pay attention to it the whole time. My blue is also um, darker than the one. If you have like more of a turquoisey blue, that will match the um, inspiration image a bit more. But we can also lighten it up by putting white. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of making it a little bit lighter on the inside. And I'm just putting white paint on top of that blue and just continuing this kind of circle around. Now let's continue getting the blue and let's continue building this circle. I'm already noticing too that um, my canvas isn't as wet anymore and you'll see that it's going to be harder if you didn't like super soak it to uh, it's going to be harder for it to spread when it's not wet. And so if that happens, we can just add a bit more water to the canvas. So okay. Acrylic can be very forgiving. It can also be a pain in the butt though. So <laughs> it's kind of double-sided love-hate relationship. All right, so now that I put that extra blue on there, I'm gonna go back over and put some more white because I do want it to be lighter than that. I want it to be a lighter. So it's like, this is like a wet on wet technique. So instead of like pre-mixing the paint and then, oh, there goes my Bob Ross. I gotta save him, one second. There we go. Like the light. It's okay, okay. Cool. Okay, so let's just keep going around. I'm gonna get some more blue because I do want it to get darker as we go. And again, I'm using predominantly like the primary colors when I'm doing these, but sometimes I do dip into some of my pre-mixed colors just for the sake of ease. So I do have a pre-mixed pink I'm going to use later for the, the leaves, but I might still play around with the red and white as well. So it just depends. So feel free if you have pre-mixed colors, you can use them too. So if you have like a pre-mixed turquoise that you're really digging, you can always have the white and then even go into like the turquoise and then put the blue or you can just use the turquoise. Like it really is up to you how you want this to be. Similarly, if you don't even want the background to be blue, you can make it whatever you want. Right, so this is just an inspiration image that I found online, and we can make it anything we want to make it. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Hey, Martha. Oh, awesome. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for stopping in and commenting. That's really sweet. Martha was just saying that she'll be painting a bit later, which is we stopped in, which is nice. Really enjoy your guys' comments. It's fun to talk to you guys. I can't always respond all the way. So I think as most of you know, like I, I work I do work full time. Like this is literally just something I do for fun. So I do try to comment back as much as I can. But sometimes I'm a little tardy on that because I have to, you know, work to make money, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> if I can figure out a way to make this a thing, then I'll, I'll be a little bit more, I'll be able to have more time to 
do that, which would be great. All right, so I've kind of started, so I continued and I kept it more dark on that side. You can also put in potentially, because it is pretty dark, you could put like a touch of black if you wanted those corners to be a little bit darker. I might do that, I don't know yet. I think I'm just, I think I'm not gonna do that right yet, but. Um, so yeah, so it's really up to you how you want to go with it. If you're happy with that first coat and you like the way it is, keep it. I tend to not like to see my canvas peek through and I can see it a lot on this. So I'm gonna opt to do like another layer on top. Um, so I'm just gonna start just kind of play with it a little bit. I might, I'm gonna wait a bit more until it's more dry to do it because um, when it's wet, it's just gonna keep blending, which works a little bit sometimes, but sometimes it's better to wait till it dries. A lot of it is just you play with it and kind of whatever you like, how you like it, that's what you do. There's no right or wrong. If you're having fun, that's all that matters. Should have grabbed up my easel I've used before. Maybe it'll hold this better in place. Okay. I do want these corners to be darker. So yeah, see my corners are too wet, so as I'm going over it, it's just pulling the paint off. So I'm gonna have to let it dry a little bit more before I darken them up. It looks like it. So you guys might be finding that too. If you're going over wet paint, it's not gonna have the coverage that you want. Right off, right off the bat. Ooh, pretty. Nice light color. Oh, awesome, Debbie. That's great. For anyone who's joining later, like anytime you join, please post your pictures because I love to see what you guys do, especially when you do something else random with it. I love it. I love to see everyone's unique perspective and take on things. That makes it so much fun. I'm just going to grab one of my clean brushes because I really want to make this more smooth, but I still want it to be more white because I, if I go in with my brush that has a bunch of blue on it, it's not going to work. Oh, I'm totally splashing on my other part. That's okay. So basically just keep like playing with this until it's the way you want it to be. If you're finding that you're pulling off paint, then you might want to wait till it dries more before you touch it again. Same if you're finding that it's not um, holding the color that you want. Okay. And for me, I, I like seeing the streakiness of the paint. So I, I enjoy having like the darker and the lighter blue kind of strokes in the background. I think that's gonna make it look really cool. Hi Rita. Yeah, so we're painting this painting here. Let's see if I can move my phone to show you. Let's see. This is the painting we are, pa this is the picture we are painting today. <laughs> It's also on the website, not website, oh my saying. Oh, I can't talk today, guys. Um, it's on the post from yesterday. It's also in the event as well. I put it in there so you have a picture reference. Okay, let's see if it's I'm too eager. It's holding a little better to make my corners darker. I still want it to be a little wet just so it blends, but I don't want it to pull off my paint which it's still totally doing also as you're painting I forgot to mention this as we we're going remember to paint the sides of your canvas if you're using like a canvas board like I am it's still beneficial to do um, because it might sit on like a, a small easel or something right but um, especially if you have like a, a real canvas with like thicker sides get, get those sides going because it, it, it just looks kind of weird 
That could just be me being a perfectionist talking. If you don't really care, then you don't have to do it. <laughs> but I really like it to have that con continuity. I need to do the top. Sorry, you probably can't see anything right now. But I also don't want to burn my hand on this light bulb. I think I need to let it wait a little bit to let this dry a bit. So you might need to do the same thing. Hey Susan, yep. Yeah, so this is available um, uh, afterwards. So it'll be on the video section as well. Diana, I don't think either your auto correct is on or or you're watching a video, a different video. Diana just asked. If, she, if I can tell her what calories she should be eating right now. And I feel like <laughs> that was either a mistake or, yeah, don't eat the paint. Don't, don't do it. Don't drink the paint water. Drink your coffee or your tea or your whatever beverage. Don't do it. All right. I was entertaining though. I, I appreciate that. Sorry, <laughs> Susan, I got distracted because that was really funny. <laughs> um, yeah, so on my... Uh, on my page um it's it's beyond there under the videos tab so all my videos are there so you can watch them all pick whichever ones you want sit around have a whole weekend of painting absolutely oh great rita oh, i'm really glad you've enjoyed the painting that's great awesome so yeah so rita's gonna join in a bit later after when the live video goes up so basically like once this is done i have to Put, I put it up and it takes like a few minutes. So realistically, it'll probably be up because we're, we're gonna take at least two hours to do this realistically. So I would say by like nine, 10 o'clock tonight, it'll be available and it'll be there until whenever. I don't have a end date to remove it. So you're all good, okay? Awesome. Awesome, Susan. And I think you messaged me earlier too about where to find the image and I, the post is the easiest way I would say um, the post when I put it up on Tuesday to see what we're painting the next day. I really enjoy doing the voting option. I think it's really fun to get everyone's engagement, but that does mean that we don't really know what we're painting until like 24 hours before kind of thing. <laughs> All right, so I think I've left it. No, I think I'm, I'm being a little bit optimistic. Yeah, no, I still need to wait longer. I'm not good with waiting. That's why I tend to paint really quickly too, because I just keep going. <laughs> I can't stop, I can't stop. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna let it sit for a little bit and actually try to be patient as I continue to touch it. Yeah, so my corners still are wet. It's dry in the inside here. So I might play a little bit just to get a bit more coverage. At the same time, I kinda don't wanna lose some of the streakiness, so I wanna be cautious of that. So if you are at the point where it is dry or if you wanna do a second layer, you would basically approach it the exact same way we did before. So you let it dry fully and then um, and then you start with the white in the middle and then you bring it out. Okay. Hey Diana. Paint watercolor. So yeah, so this so this is acrylic paint. Um, and the colors I always stick with the basics predominantly. So if you have red, white, red, blue, yellow, white, and black, then you can paint any of the paintings I'm doing, but it might just be a bit off from the inspiration image, because a lot of the inspiration image has like more specific, um, or more detailed. Sometimes you have turquoise or pinks or whatnot. So if you have any of those, that's cool. Um, but we can kind of recreate our own image if you have those basics. Cool. All right, let us continue because I can't wait anymore. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna go with my medium brush, I think, to do this next layer. We'll see, I might switch to my bigger brush after, I don't know yet. Okay, so I'm starting again in the middle and I'm just going in with white. And like I said, this is optional. You don't have to do a second layer. If you're happy with the way it looks, then that's totally fine. You can just let it dry and just chill out. And but just don't uh, don't eat your paint colors or your or your paint. Don't drink your water, paint water. <laughs> just don't do that. That has absolutely almost happened to me a few times. One of my first paint sessions, I put my my paintbrush right in my coffee. <laughs> I mean, some people do paint with coffee, so I guess, I 
you know, I could have just tried a new technique perhaps, but I was not very happy because I really wanted to drink that. That's okay, it happens. The perils of being an artist. Okay. So what I'm doing, if anyone's just jumping in or whatnot, is I'm just going, doing another kind of layer of the same thing we just did. So I'm starting with the white, I'm getting a little bit of blue, I'm going back to white to lighten it up right on the canvas and I'm just bringing it out. And I'm just still going in this like circular motion around. Add some darker blue. And when I do this I kind of like put the darker color on because now the canvas isn't wet the way it was before, right? So that's a little, that's the different part I guess, is that the canvas isn't wet. So I'm gonna kind of throw on some dark blue and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my white on right on top of it and that will blend it in and still give a good coverage so the white kind of acts as my way to soften it and then I'm blending right on the actual painting itself And it's, it's really technique as well, so if you decide you really like the way the strokes look and you want it to have a little bit more, you can see more of the strokes, then leave them on. If you want it to be more blended, then you can do it this way. Alternately, you can use water to blend it a bit too, but the water does thin out the paint. So just be cautious of that, because that, I find sometimes that ends up kind of like ruining the, for me anyways, I just, I don't like using water too much to blend if you want to do like a little bit like just use like a little little bit of water use less than you think because I feel like it overpowers and just wash, washes it out <laughs> I guess so that it's kind of a pun I suppose but kind of is what it does So with the second layer, it's more about like how it looks and if you are like, you know, getting some of the streaks in to kind of have more brush strokes, having it more blended if you want. So it depends again what you want. So if you want it to be, have more brush strokes then leave it a bit more uneven. If you want it to be more blended, you can do that. Or like I said, if you don't want to do a second layer, you don't have to, you can just wait until it dries and then we can continue in it momentarily once we do that. And if you do have different blues, again, you can always add like the turquoise into the darker blue if you want, or put darker blue into the turquoise, like you can always change that up too if you have like a few different premixed blues available to you. That's an option as well. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with it. I do want to darken up these corners. As you guys have heard me say for the last little bit, so I better get those done before I move on and forget about them and then be upset later when I look at my painting and be like, ah, they're not done. Mm, this corner was still pretty wet actually, so I just kind of peeled it off. going over to some areas where I can still see the canvas through that are bothering me. So if you're wondering what I'm doing right now, that is what I'm doing. Because I can't stand it. Alright. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with it. A little bit of water too. 
There we go. There you go, Asif. Sorry about that. I just pulled it back a little bit so you, the full board is there for you. I'm just touching some spots up with a little bit of water just because some of it was a little harsh. So some of the paint strokes, I wanted it just to be a little softer. So I'm putting like a little dab of water and then just like softening it. But again, just be careful because sometimes it ends up blending it weird. So just be cautious. Okay, I think I'm good with that for now. Oh, thank you, Tiffany. So if, um, is it when you turn your device? Yeah, so if you're, my, mine is head on, like mine's, um, my phone is in like portrait mode. That's how I do what, paint all, paint? No. That's how I um, record or stream all my videos through my phone because my computer is not my friend and it's kept stopping all the time prior. So I use my phone because it's more reliable. Um, so if you have your device on the side to see this, um, that might happen. And hopefully, it's so dark. I need a better light. Maybe this one. Hold on, let me see what I can do with that. I think it did nothing. I'm gonna play with the light while that dries a little bit, and then we are gonna start on the next part of it, okay? good as it's going to get. Okay. There we go. I can move this. I feel like that's almost better actually if I take this light out. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this light out. We're gonna move on to the birch tree in just a moment. Yeah, I think that light that I thought was helping is actually was not helping, and now that is much, that's much better. Yeah, that works better. Okay, we're gonna do it like that. Okay, cool. Technicalities. All right. So next up, we're gonna start plotting in where we want our birch tree, okay? Or trees branches okay so let's take a look at our inspiration image and you can try to mimic the image um, the way it looks here if you want to or you can go off book and make your branches any which way you so desire I'm going to try to emulate this image and I'll talk you through it so we can try to copy that ish um, but I'm still gonna do a few of the branches kind of random I'm pretty sure um, because that tends to happen when I paint trees but we'll get the same, the, the feel of it, getting that big branch across. So when we do um, this birch tree, we can do it, I think, let's do it with, I think if we do it with black, and then we're gonna put some white on top after, I think that will work out quite nicely. So let's use black for it. Okay, so let's get black paint. Oh, good. Thanks, Suzu, for letting us know that it's better this way. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, I'm probably going to need more black than that, realistically, but that's all right. Okay. So, really up to you which paintbrush you want to use for this. Again, it's definitely in relation to the canvas size. I think I'm going to go with, um, like, my medium brush for now, and then I'm going to switch into my thinner brush when I want to do some of the thinner um, branches essentially okay so I want my black paint to spread easily so I'm gonna put a little bit of water if your black paint is, is thin enough like just see the consistency of it if you already kind of have like an ink like consistency I would say you're rocking and rolling you don't want to make it too wet because then it will drip um, and that's not the effect that we're really going for in this piece um, so yeah so just try to have water so it's easy to spread but not that's going to drip okay so let's start with that. So this branch, I think I'm gonna have this guy and I'm just gonna put a line in and then we're gonna thicken them up, right? So I'm gonna have this come through and it's gonna come right across like that. 
So throw a big black line right across the beautiful image that you just made and don't be scared. And then I'm gonna thicken it up as I go. So I'm gonna just thicken this guy up because I want him to be a little bit fatter. Okay. If you need that light on behind you, feel free to put that on, eh? Okay. Okay. Because it did get darker and it's gonna get darker as the day goes on. Or oh. night, I guess. Okay. So I like to always start thin and then just thicken up my line. So let's do that. Okay. If the paint underneath is wet, don't do this part. Wait till it dries. Because you're going to pick up the paint underneath and it's going to blend into your branch. Mine's doing that a little bit because my paint was pretty thick in the middle there. It's not the worst case because the birch tree is going to be black and white-ish anyway, so it's, going to have, it's, it will, it's still going to work. Okay. And I, for me, again, I like to have the lines like very opaque. Like I don't like to make it look very like painted right off the bat, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of funny since this is a painting, but I like to make it very um, like straight lines. We got that. Um, I want him a little thicker. I want this part here thicker. And that's the thing, when you go thinner, then you can always add to it. If you go too thick, you're kind of stuck. It's a lot harder to fix a mistake like that. So then at that point, just work with it. Just accept it that your tree is fatter, a little chunkier. More calories, you know? Maybe it ate too much paint. Um, ooh. Let's get that going there. There we go. And with tree branches, they can have little knots in them. They don't have to be like perfectly straight. And they kind of, in a way, they kind of shouldn't be like perfectly straight. They should kind of have little, you know, like bumps or ridges in them, you know, it doesn't have to be like a perfectly straight. Okay. So once we have that line as our, like our guideline or our base, then you can build off of it. If you want him thicker, I think I may want him a little bit thicker in this area here. So I'm just going to thicken him up. Okay. And just eyeball it and see how you like it. If you like the way it is then keep it if you want them a bit thicker do it it should kind of be like thicker here and then it gets thinner so like this here for me is still a little bit too thin so I'm gonna just thicken that up here as well okay there we go I think that looks a little better Okay, there we go. And I'm still just wetting down my black paint a bit because it's a little thick. Okay. But again, it's up to you. If your paint is nice and smooth and going, you don't need to wet it, right? It's really just up to you, depending on how your paint is. Okay, then I'm going to have this other branch that's coming out from over here. So let's pop that guy in. And then I want him to kind of come out like that but then there's a bigger base there because it's attached to this tree. Okay. And I, again, up here and I'll, like, so when you're doing it too, remember you have a bunch of like little leaves. So for here, for example, I feel like that got a little thick. So I'm probably going to use some leaves to cover some of that mistake up. <laughs> so if you do something like that, don't stress because you can put leaves to cover it. It's kind of looking like a creepy tree. I always find it creepy when it's like just the outline first and then it starts to like have more life when we put more things on it. Okay, so I'm going to have this branch to come out, but I'm not going to go super thin because this paintbrush is not my friend for the super thin part. So I'm just going to get the, the, the base of this branch and just to go like that because I want him 
like that, yeah. So with this one, I kind of just built my outline of where I wanted the branch to live, and then I like essentially like colored it in with the black. Okay, and it's gonna look kind of stumpy, but I'm gonna go back with a thinner brush just to continue those lines off, but I don't wanna do that just yet. Okay, so where else do we want a thicker one? I think we have one that comes down across the bottom here. So this guy's gonna part around here and come down and kind of go up a bit. Okay, and this one's gonna be kind of thicker. as we go okay and what I would also suggest when you do a branch then just like take a step back and just look at the painting for just a bit before continuing to put our branches in just to make sure it's going the way you want them to go and sometimes you might notice like oh maybe I want an extra branch here or wherever so it kind of gives you a bit of a perspective on it as well because um, sometimes we get too close, too in the weeds of it. Okay, and then there's another branch that lives up here. So I'm going to kind of do what I don't usually do, which I'm going to go from where it's thinner, and I'm going to bring it down. Like that. does have like another branch kind of coming out there we go cool all right so I think I'm going to move into my um thinner branch yes if um I can't because the painting right now is pretty much exactly in the middle So I don't know, I could maybe go like that, maybe. As long as I can still paint it well with my, yeah, it's kind of the size of that. That's what I can do there, if that helps a bit. Okay, so after I'm done using one of my, the black anyways, I'm just gonna clean off the brush and I'm just going to use one of my thinner brushes to continue with some of the branches. I don't know if I want to go this thin yet. Ah, whatever. We'll use my thinnest one for now. And we'll go from there. Okay. All right. So now where else do we want some more of these branches to live? So similarly, you still need to make sure the paint is easy to spread. And let's just put in some more branches, okay? So this one, one that kind of comes down and it goes up in here. Okay, and there's another one that's like here and it attaches to this one. Okay, but again, you can put them wherever you want. So I, again, I'm kind of copying it a bit, but I might start going a bit rogue and putting the branches wherever I want. If you're doing that, good job. your hand in the paint when it's wet. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. My birds are gonna live in the center there, so I don't want this to impact them. Okay, 
I think I want another one that kind of comes out of here. Like that. Okay. There's no screwing up. You're okay. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Just either thicken the branch or put some leaves on it. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. It's all good. Good, good. Yeah, so don't stress. If you guys do something and you're not crazy about it, don't worry about it. It's okay. Okay, let's bring that up. Close this branch here. And again, yeah, just try to remember to try to stay thinner, and then you can always thicken it. So just keep that in mind. If possible. And again, if not, you put some leaves on top of the thick, ugly parts that you don't like. <laughs> and no one will know the difference. You just say, yep, yeah, that's what I wanted. I, I wanted the leaves there. That's how I wanted it. That was my composition. Keep putting a few little branches on these. So try to keep the middle um, free of branches because those birds are going to live there and we want them to really stand out. So that's the only kind of thing just to keep in mind. And the rest of the branches in a way kind of frame the birds, right? Because we're going to have some like leaves here and leaves there and leaves kind of around them and the birds are like in the center of the the frame of the branches. So it works out nicely. Keeping an eye on the comments. Okay, I think we're okay. So far, so good. Okay. Alright, now let's bring another one that comes up here. And some of the branches can be scraggly. Some of them can be more like very straight and narrow. And again, if there's something you don't like, we can just cover it up left or right. So don't worry. I say that as I kind of put too much paint in this one little blotch here. <laughs> I'm going to create a couple of different branches out of it. See, that's what I meant to do. Perfect. <laughs> no one will know. Well, I guess you guys know. Okay. And this guy definitely needs some more stuff going on here. Okay, let's bring this out. And just so you guys know too, like sometimes when I go down, when I'm like painting this and I'm pressing down on it, 
it does get thicker than I want it. So if you're feeling that, I'm feeling that too. So don't, <laughs> don't worry, it's normal. Like I said, don't stress about it because we can just make it look really pretty anyways. Okay, let's add some more to this one up here. Let's put another branch this way, right off the page, boom. Okay, and then this guy kind of goes up. And I want one that kind of comes in this way. Nice. We could put like a black cat and a pumpkin on here and it look like a Halloween painting right now. <laughs> right? It kind of has that whole vibe to it. Where's the bat? Right? Put like a bat, <laughs> change it all up. Actually, we're doing that. No, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But if you want to, you can. Mm -hmm. You guys can do whatever you want, like I said. I am feeling a little witchy right now. <laughs> I'm just going to clear off that brush there. Okay. All right. Looking pretty nice, I would say. Okay, but now we got to make them look like birch trees. Can't just look like a silhouette tree. We want it to have this kind of spring feel to them, don't we? So I'll let you guys keep, you guys can keep doing that for a little bit. I'm gonna start thinking about how we're gonna do that part. So we can either add, um, to do the birch trees, you can either add something like, if you have like a credit card that you're not using, <laughs> like an old card, or maybe like a business card that someone gave you, or really if you have like a palette knife, um, so like if you have like a palette knife like this, um, that can work. Or if you have like just something with like an edge, um, this can be a really great tool to kind of get the, those like, it kind of looks like little like, almost like little rectangles or like a kind of vibe to get it looking like a birch tree. That's a really good way to do it. If you don't, don't stress. So if you do wanna grab something like that, grab it now. Um, and we can, and I can show you guys how to play with that. If you don't have it, it's fine too. Um, what I would suggest if you're doing it with just like a brush is you're gonna do it, try if you have like a harder brush, I would go with. So get something with harder bristles if you have it. If you don't, again, don't stress, we'll just work with what you have. Um, and just make sure it's pretty clean. And we're gonna kind of dry brush it a little bit to get that vibe down. So I'll kind of show you two ways and you can see and you can use whichever way you like best. There's one here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, cool. So we're gonna try to just to mimic it. So let me, I'm just gonna bring my water. The last thing I want is that too. So this is our inspiration image here, okay? So if you look at the way the white is, the white looks like choppy. So we're gonna to try to mimic that with the palette knife or if you have like a business card or some kind of like sharp, like harder piece of paper with like an edge. Um, but you can also do the same thing with a paintbrush as well. So I'll show you both ways and then you can, if you wanna try both ways, see which one you like best, cool. And then once we put the white on, we're still gonna go back over after and put a little bit more black on. That's what I, that's what I would do. So I, that's how I'm gonna approach it. So if you end up putting and you put too much white and it's not working the way you want it, we're gonna still put some, we can still go back over and put some black in it to kind of put back in some of the shadow, okay? Okay, so let's try this out, guys. Okay, so let's get some white. So I'm just going on, I'm going, I'm using like the smaller end of the palette knife, so it's, but use whatever makes sense in relation to your painting. 
And then I'm just going to like scrape it on. On. This is where my dollar store pants aren't so great. <laughs> <laughs> It, look, it looks very poopy right now. I think I'm gonna to prefer to use a paintbrush, to be honest. So for me, that's not working for me. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it looks really poopy. So that's not working, and I think the paint I have is a bit too thin. So perhaps we're gonna abort that mission. So try that. If it works for you though, because it might give you that technique, if it's not working, then we can always change it up, okay? I don't like it personally. So I'm going to change that up. So I'm going to go over that a little bit with the black, and tone it down, and then I'm going to fix that up with a paintbrush instead. So I'm going to kind of, the opposite of like white out, I'm going to black out my white because that did not go the way I wanted it to go. get you and I just made this branch fatter because it bothered me because <laughs> I made a mistake but that's fine okay let's do it instead with the paintbrush okay Ooh, throw my paintbrush into my palette okay so I'm gonna get white on my brush I'm using a bit of a harder bristle and I'm kind of doing it on a dry brush so there's not like a lot a lot a lot of paint on it it's a bit drier and then now let's just sweep on which I like that more so you don't want it to be uniform you want it to be thicker in some spots than others oh I do want a bit more paint than that And we're gonna go back in and put some black in it after just to break up the lines. Ooh, some of that was still a little wet. That's not good. Yeah, that's better. I'm more control. Honestly, the palette knife, oh, it freaked me out. I don't think I like that too much. And I'm not going to go too much. I'm going to try to just a little bit as I get over here. I do want to touch it a little bit just so it's not just all of a sudden a shadow. Okay, and then here. I'm also not going, I'm kind of keeping like a border on my branches. So I'm not bringing the white all the way to the ends. I'm trying not to, at least coming down into these areas. And I think just so really on the thicker ones is where we want a little bit of it. trying to go if the tree is going upright I'm trying to move my brush to match like so if it's this way I'm going kind of across it if it's up here I'm going across it so I'm not trying to go like down it I want to have like little like horizontal lines I guess on it I might need to get my thinner brush to do some of these smaller ones. That's okay. 
just to get the feel that it's not just a sh silhouette in the background or shadow. And we're still going to be putting in um, our all the other stuff. And we're going to go over again with some black to like continue and to keep that going, okay? So keep that in mind because right now it looks a little spotty and that's fine. We're getting it to get the base for us to build our... I guess I could have potentially worked with that too, but I, I really I was not feeling that palette knife. I had to up my palette knife skills. That's for sure. If it's working really well for you guys, like if you're really digging the palette knife and it's giving you a good texture, please, uh, yeah, I would love to see it and like share your comments too. Like when you are all done and stuff, it'd be awesome. How's the palette knife working? Uh, off and on, I'm using both actually. Going back um, and forth? Yeah, sounds good, it looks good. Um, it's okay, it's, it's, a, it's yeah. building it, right? So I yep. think we just have to try to keep building it, so. I know, I feel, I feel you guys too. I'm like, mm, okay, let's see how we're gonna make this look a little bit nicer, all right. So I'm going to go with my thinner brush with my black and let's add a few details to this and see if that will work out. Okay, so I'm just going to put a few lines. Oh yeah, okay. Let's just create a line right off the branch, Lisa. Why don't we? <laughs> I just want to break up some of the white bits because it's a bit too much and I think that will add... So I'm just, so when I did it with the paintbrush, what happens is it kind of becomes, as I've said before, when I paint, I tend to like, it looks too repetitive. And if it's a natural object, like a natural object doesn't have the same width space of things, right? So you have to kind of break that up and add a little bit of inconsistency to it. And even when I'm doing this part, I have to be careful because I tend to again, follow similar patterns as I go. So just let's try to keep that in mind um, as you guys are doing it. So I'm just going to add like a few kind of like, like lines and marks, right? And maybe like this area has a bit more black in it. I'm just going to put a bit more. Okay. And then I might go back over with some white and do the same type of thing and just add a bit more details as well. Okay. That already has more of the texture we want to have. That's looking good.
Are you okay? <laughs> You're not digging it, eh? <laughs> oh, that's okay. It's hard because you trying to keep the line of your tree and you don't want it to get into your background. And that's what happened. Yeah, I figured. Because I know I almost did the same thing, too. I'm not sure if you guys can hear, but that my mother-in-law my mother Linda is just in the background. So <laughs> she's having a bit of a... Struggling a bit because when she's painting, it's going into the background a bit. And you you might be finding that too. So just be just work slowly. Like don't feel like you have to go quickly. Again, I know I might paint a bit faster, but work at your pace. And if you want to watch this after, you can always rewind or watch it later. Not rewind now, but it'll be available on the videos tab after, so don't don't stress. So as I'm adding the black, you can see that it already has more of a birch effect. Now putting in these little black little lines and the areas that I haven't really done that, it still looks a little funky. And I think also making sure you have a nice solid line, like kind of like framing it, it it's making it pop nicer as well. So, cause some of my white kind of was going like off the, um, range? yeah, off the range of like the, sorry, it's hard to say, I lose my train of thought when I'm painting. Um, it kind of went into the background, for example, it didn't really make sense. So when I put the black on it and kind of create that barrier, and then all of a sudden it starts looking more like um, the branch, the tree, and it has that effect, right? And remember, we're still going to be putting a bunch of, like, leaves and little things. So, again, if it's not turning out exactly the way you want it, it's okay. Because we can play with it a bit later. So I'm just adding a few little lines. Like, you can see I'm kind of going and, like, sometimes I'm kind of trying to go, like, in the shape, like, because obviously this branch would be a bit, like, circular or cylindrical, I suppose. So when I'm doing my little swoops, I'm trying to have a little bit of, instead of being like a straight line, it has like a bit of a curve to it. Trying not to make them all the same. I think it does still kind of have a pattern to it, but that's okay. and do the same thing. Hey, Patty. So Patty says she's going to be doing this after. Oh, you like watching it first and then doing it. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Sometimes you can kind of see what's working, what's not working, and then it's good to see what, how you want to approach it. That's a, that's a good way to do it for sure. And it also helps too, then you can then like, pause the video when it's already pre-recorded, of course, or fast forward it. I feel like I'm going a little bit too similar in these areas. That's okay. All right. 
I think that's working nicely. I'm gonna add a few more like kind of streakies through it. I don't know if I'm gonna end up going back over on the with the white actually. I think I think I'm pretty happy with the way it's coming out. It's looking good. It's kinda of funny though, right? Because again, like when I started I was kinda of like, okay, I don't know how this is gonna <laughs> be exactly. Cause when you do the first layer, it's a little deceptive. But again, the great thing about acrylic is you can kind of just keep kind of doing some layers and then it works out really well. No, you're not strange at all, Patty. I think that makes a lot of sense. You can always say it snowed. That's true. It could also be like a snowy painting. <laughs> Again, right now we're going from like the fall creepy theme to like <laughs> right to winter. Okay guys, it's snowing now. <laughs> But it's kind of funny because you can kind of get like, again, this is like the basics of this one painting and then you can alter it to make it whatever you want. So this painting obviously was very like spring-like with like, you know, the blossoms and the birds. But yeah, you can take this and if you put some other elements into it, and then it's a totally different vibe to it. So, so basically you can paint anything. <laughs> Just have fun with it. Enjoy it. All right, so I'm going to let this... I'm going to stop touching it because I definitely feel like as I'm going through it that I think I could probably paint those birch trees for like hours. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know how you guys feel about that. But that's how I feel. I feel like it, it could just keep I'm going. Done. Yeah, so if you wanted to stop, stop. You can always go back and do a bit more touch-ups after too. Um, so yeah, let's uh, enjoy that. Take a little whew, breather. Look at it from a distance. Make sure it's working the way you want to. Remember that we're gonna put some, you know, leaves all over the tree. And that will be our, our next step, essentially. So, so choose the color that you wanna use for the leaves. Um, I'm gonna stick with kind of the pink blossoms that are happening. I have a pre-mixed pink from the dollar store called Tutti Fruity. And I really enjoy the name of it. It makes me happy. So I'm gonna start with that. But I'm also going to, do you need pink as well? Yeah, there you go. That's better. Um, I'm also going to get some red as well. And I'm gonna put a little more white because I think I'm gonna need some white. So I might make some of my own pink as well, okay? So now let's Play around with some of these leaves. So let's take a look again at our inspiration image to see how the original approached it. So with these, they look just kind of random and blotchy. There's different sizes, there's different colors. There's kind of a dark and like a light pink um, that's been added. So that's similar to the approach we're going to take. So we're going to go with one um, color first essentially. So whether you want to do like a light pink or a dark pink or whatever color you want to use to start, um, we'll start with that and then we'll layer it on with the next color on top and then we can always go back and forth. So don't feel like it's um, permanent if you start with one, like it's, it's really just fluid and let's just have fun with it. So I'm going to pick, I think to start, I'm going to start with my more my medium brush maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna start my medium brush and then maybe I, I have like one that's thin, but it's not as thin as my like thinnest brush. So I might go to that one. Maybe I'll just use that one right off the hop. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna use this brush. It's like a, a bit of a thinner brush, but it's not as thin as like my super thin fine brush. 
This is the number three, also from the dollar store. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my Tutti Fruity Pink, but it doesn't matter. If you wanna go with a darker shade first, you can. If you wanna go with a lighter shade first, you can. Doesn't, it, again, doesn't really matter. Um, you can start with dark first, I suppose. That may make the most sense because you could do the one furthest in the background. Um, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to start with these. Okay, so let's start. So let's put some of these on. So really, you want to find whatever branch you want to add to. And then you want to just dab. Okay, with your brush. Again, be mindful that... If you're always dabbing the, like, the same way, you're gonna have very mm -hmm. uniform leaves. So move your brush around, tilt it back and forth, have fun with it. And remember, some of the leaves can like be kind of like in the air, so it doesn't need to be fully attached to the branches. Right, some of these can be on top of the branches, so you can kind of, it covers some of them. And this is the first round, so you don't need to worry about covering all the space or looking that great right now. Right now it's just, let's start by putting some of this color on. Yeah, if your painting is, is still wet, then you don't wanna go on top of the black or the white because it will just pull. So try to paint wherever it's dry to put this color on. You might need to keep going back and putting more paint on your paintbrush too. So just keep that in mind. It's not just gonna, like you can't just like dip it once and then paint like 10 leaves. It's not gonna work that way. You might need to go back a few times. Okay. If you have um, like Q-tips, that's another way you can do leaves and that looks really cool. You can like tie a bunch of them together and like dot it and that looks really neat. Okay. So now we're just going to move on to like another branch and then do the same type of thing. You can also alternate between um, paint brushes. So if you're finding that like this brush is kind of giving me the same pattern and it's looking a little too uniform. You can switch up and pick a different brush and do the same type of thing. So it'll kind of have a different look or a different width of leaf. Just, just dot it. Don't really worry about it too much. Hey, Lori. Yeah, of course you can watch it later. Everything's under the videos tab on my um, my Facebook page, or you can watch it on my YouTube channel, Lisa's Painting Parties. Either or, it'll be available probably on both by about nine o'clock, nine ten o'clock tonight, and it'll be up ongoing. So anytime you want to watch, you can do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I have no rhyme or reason as to where I'm dotting it. I'm just kind of sticking to where, kind of where the branch is and then I'm just playing with it. So don't stop thinking if you're thinking <laughs> and just like play. Some can be fat, some can be thinner, it doesn't matter. See, so some of mine are gonna be like that, some are gonna be like this.
Have any of you guys tried um, doing the acrylic pouring, like those paint pouring? I've seen so many videos about that and it's, it looks so cool. But as I've said many times, I use dollar store paint. And as you can probably guess by that, I'm very cheap. So when I see that, <laughs> frugal, yeah, that's a nice way of saying it. It like really stresses me out because I feel like you're wasting so much paint when that happens. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the courage to actually ever try it, even though I really want to. <laughs> so I'm like, I really want to try it, but like, I don't know if I can bring myself to use that much paint in a go. But when I see people's finished pictures, they're so cool. It also like you have to give up so much control when you do it and just like kind of see what happens and oh my gosh it gives me like a little bit of anxiety maybe i should do it just to like not feel anxious about it <laughs> all right so i have that going on there um let me see so i think i'm gonna go and i'm gonna add a little bit of red um to my pink because i want to make my, my pre-mixed pink basically a little darker so I'm just putting some red in it but I don't want it to be like red and I'm just gonna go back and just kind of do the same thing All right just to put a little bit more another kind of color popping in there okay. I'm not gonna put as many I don't think but I'm gonna try to dab it on to areas that Maybe like don't have as much going on. But I also don't really want to think about it too much as I'm doing it. So I feel like when you do that, it kind of happens more naturally. Oh, I need more red paint in there. Cool. All right. And I think I'm going to also go a little bit lighter. Oh, I'm glad you guys feel the same way. So Patty and Don agree with me about the paint pouring. Uh. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. So I felt a little bit strange. I think it's such a cool idea and I really want to do it, but I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can get behind it. Okay. So I've got like a bit of a darker. I've got my main pink and I'm going to just do a lighter pink as well for funsies. So, kind of the same thing. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. I think that will make it pop more. Yeah. And again, I'm using quite a bit of paint. <laughs> Not as much as an acrylic pour paint, but. Did you mix some the white and pink? Yeah, I just put some um, pink into my white. Okay. And then I'm Makes just using sense. that just to get a lighter. A lighter pink going on. Okay. 
My brush has like a lot of paint on it. I can feel it. It's kind of like slopping on. So you do want quite a bit of paint, especially when you're going over an area that already has wet paint on it, especially when that wet paint that you're going over is darker than what you're putting on because it's it will, again, mix in. So you kind of have to keep dipping your brush to get more of that color on. So I'm going kind of like, oh, I made a weirdness there. That's okay. We'll go with it. It's all good. And remember too, if there's any of those weird branches that you did not like the way they look, keep that in mind and pop some leaves on them now <laughs> in case you forgot from earlier. I get so into this process, you forgot about that ugly branch that you won't notice until it's up on the wall and you're like, no, <laughs> I can see the line. So yeah, so get that sucker now, put some leaves on it if you don't like the way it looks. And just always kind of like look from a distance to see if there's any area that you want to put more in. I kind of like more like that. Yeah, pretty. I think I'm good with it. Yeah, I think I'm good with it. We're good. And again, mine's like a, it's not exactly like the original. The original didn't have that like. I would say that extra layer because those are really standing out quite a bit um, but I I like it more like that I kind of like it so make it the way you want to if again I'm using pink you could make it a multicolor tree it doesn't have to be a realistic you know it could be anything you want no. so it isn't right you can do anything you want it's all good don't don't worry about it it works oh it looks yeah when I, I really like I enjoy it more like looking at my painting You're so from there great. <laughs> Real life, it's all right, but I, when I see it in the, <laughs> I see it in the screen, I feel like it looks way nicer. No, it looks good from here too. Oh, good, really thank does. you. Okay, cool, guys. So I'll let you guys continue playing with those, and then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plop our plop our birds in. That's a nice way to say it, eh? We're gonna <laughs> place. we're gonna place our birds in. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna place them. All right. Yeah, now it doesn't look so creepy anymore, right? Mm -hmm. If you put a black cat in there now, it'll look kind of weird. Although it might look kind of cute. If you're more of a cat person. Put two cats on the branch, why not? That'd be fun. All right. So I think, so in this area here, it's dry. So I'm good to start playing with that and to decide where my birds are going to live. Um, they're not going to go on top of any of the leaves, so we're good to go there. Um, what I would suggest doing is um, maybe we could use yellow perhaps to like sketch and I have to say that in quotes them in <clears throat> since they are going to be pretty much yellow and if we use white we're not going to be able to really see it so let's grab some yellow and I might lay in it a little bit with white or I might just use it as is I'm not exactly sure yet and you can decide that as well mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to use my thin brush I think, unless it stops cooperating with me as I do this. Okay, so I'm just making my yellow paint, again, the consistency of like ink. So I want it to be thick so it's not gonna like run down the actual canvas because we don't want that to happen. But if it does, it's not the end of the world and I can help you try to fix that because that has absolutely happened to me before. And I'm sure it will happen again. I'm gonna try to make it a little bit lighter, I think. I want it like kind of a yellowy white. And this is just really just to sketch in where we want the birds to live. We're gonna paint over most of this, I think, anyways, after. I want it to be a bit more white than yellow, though, because um, it will cover on top of the black areas better if it's closest to white. If it's a yellow, the black's gonna show through 
quite a bit. So now again, um, let's start thinner than we want to go. Um, so let's say where we want them to kind of live. So I'm gonna draw like kind of a line with my paint. So this is gonna be like where the head is of one, kind of like there. And it's going to live like here, kind of like that. And then his tail is gonna come down. So I'm, which I don't even know if you can see it because it's so light in color. So let's decide where you want him to live. And then let's start building out the body of him or her. Everything's a him today. Okay, so that's kind of there. And then there's like a little, kind of gives him like a little belly. It's probably the wing or something. Listen, I like painting. I don't know the technical terms for anything. Okay, um, and then, so let's give him a little belly. Maybe it's the wing or the belly. No, it's the belly. It's the body. It's the body of it. Okay. Okay, so let's kind of make it like a little shape and just kind of build it out to however size you want this guy to be. Okay. And then we're going to try not to put your hand in the other part of your <laughs> wet canvas because I just did that. And then we're going to bring the feather down this way. Okay. So do the best you can. Start thinner than you want. And then thicken it as you go. And this is just the like base of it. We're still gonna add detail to this guy after. So I've made him a little bit too thick here. That's okay. That's how his tail is now. It's the way it works. Okay, and then he needs to come out a little bit in this side. And then there is another feather that kind of comes out here. Okay, it makes a point like that. So just use the um, original image as a guide, or if you have a silhouette of another animal that you want to put on this branch or another type of bird, you can do that too. And I'm just trying to eyeball it as best as I can. It may not be perfect, and that's okay. His neck is definitely way thicker than what I just made it here, so I'm just gonna make his head here. And then, sorry? I thought it was perfect. Oh, thank you. Um, so I'm just gonna give him a little head like that. I probably should have worked on that guy first because now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna put my hand and it's gonna end up totally smearing this bird. <laughs> oh, silly me. Okay, and then kind of give him a little beak. Okay. So I don't know if you can see that all right. It's very light. It's very hard to see because it's a very light color. Okay, I'm gonna bring this in a little closer. Can see it. The reason why is because it's so similar to the white background that's really hard to see. So I'm just basically trying to draw this bird in with a light yellow, and then we're going to use that as a base, and we're essentially going to color it in with the right colors that we want to use. Okay. And then because we're already using kind of a yellow base. Um, I, wonder, um, I feel like if I zoom in, I'm going to mess up the, I'm able to see it. Yeah, it's basically, it is, it is like a teardrop, I would say, yeah. Um, and then it just has the longer angle for the, the long feather at the bottom here. 
it's, it is really hard to see. Eh? Okay, let me see if I can, um, let me see if I can darken him up a bit so then you guys can see it a little bit more. I'll just put a bit of a darker yellow and see if maybe you can see him a little bit easier. It is really hard to see, I know, cause it's, it's like a light yellow on a, on a white background. Not super easy. I do want him to be a little darker anyways. I want light because just in case, again, the whole mistake thing. So I would rather it be a little bit lighter. So if I make a mistake, you can't really tell as bad. But also because um, it will allow me to put a darker color on top and it'll pop a little bit better, especially over the black. Mine's not sitting on my branch. Maybe he's flying. Is he flying? Mm -hmm. That's it. Maybe the other bird said something to upset him. And he's flying away. He's like, I'm not staying here. I don't know if that made it a little... Uh, they make it a little darker. That's really hard, eh? Yeah, no, none of them can see it either. It really sucks. I'm going to see if I can zoom in. Okay. How's... Okay, I zoomed in. I just don't know if now... Can you guys see that better? Let me know. So it looks better when I look at it. Yeah? Okay, good. Mila says yes. I will go with you, Mila. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So, awesome. So hopefully everyone else got that and it didn't like mess up and I, you only see like a weird side of my painting. <laughs> but in this, it does show up a bit better like that. So we're gonna go with that, okay? Parfait. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna figure out the other bird there. So I'm going to move this slightly where I want the other bird to live. Like that. It's going to be tricky. Now I know you guys are watching me real close. The pressure's on. Okay. I'm going to go with my lighter one. Yes. Patty says yes. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> okay. So similar, only the other way, basically. So this guy, he's going to be like this. So I'm going to put like a line in. Am I? Yeah, I'm good. What are you doing with it? <laughs> a big blob on his head. That's funny. Put a hat on him. <laughs> that would be cute. That could be cute. Why not? All right. So here. And then let's give him a little belly. Again, I'm using the lighter color. So if it's hard to see, that's because I'm using my, like, white yellow paint. Okay, so it's like a, a bit of a, looks kind of like a, a large almond. Maybe he has a bigger belly. Maybe it's going to be more of a peanut. I don't know. That, that didn't really make sense. I'm sorry. That was a bad joke. Okay, there we go. It's so windy. I don't know how it is for you guys. I'm in Ajax and the wind is like the tree shaking. It's pretty crazy. All right, so I want this tail to come down like so. Tail? I don't even know what's a tail. I don't know. What, what's that part of the bird? Is that a tail, Linda? You're doing good. Oh, I don't. You know birds better than I do. So. <laughs> it, it, it is the tail. Is it the tail? Okay, perfect. Good, good. I want to make sure. I tend to like the shapes of things and not know the words for them. Okay. So let's now on this side make him a little fatter and give him a wing. Okay, there we go. So again, it's kind of a line. It looks kind of like a, again, like another kind of almond type shape. Not really almond, it's like half an almond. Cause it's kind of like more flat on the top and then curved like that. So how are you doing? Tail, <laughs> thanks Patty. Perfect. Okay. All right, so now let's give him a head. So we'll just do Just do a circle at first, 
kind of like a half circle like that work it smaller than bigger you can always give them a bigger head or a bigger wing or a bigger tail two birds they look more like mirror images on the other branch the one is a bit further back but these ones are pretty close these ones are really in love hmm. or they're about to fight I don't really know well, how do birds fight it's do they fight time they're, they're in love. okay fine <laughs> I guess we'll go with the love oh, part yeah, they fight. <laughs> fight for food Oh, that makes sense. Alright, yeah. They are in love. It's springtime. That makes sense. Okay. I'm going to darken him up, too. Still pretty black. Sorry, you can't see the face? Yeah, like the beak, how it is. It's not that good, I can tell you that. The other beak's way nicer. I don't see the original picture, so. Beak's kind of big. This guy's a bigger beak than this one. Okay, so I just darkened them up a little bit. But this, I don't know, this guy looks a little bit, like, annoying. I don't know. He looks like he has a bit of an attitude. I don't like the way his shape is. It bothers me. He looks kind of like, meh. Like, I'm going <laughs> to tell you off. Or I don't know. I don't like him. I think it's his beak. I think it's his it's beak. Well, and his body's a little bit funky. I don't know. He kind of looks like he's, I don't know. I, I don't like this bird. This bird is not, not a friendly bird. I'm not a fan of him. Hopefully, when you guys paint your birds, you guys have friendlier birds than this guy. This guy just yeah, seems... I don't know. I don't like him. <laughs> He's not even like, real, and I'm, like, angry at him. <laughs> I'm like, I don't like you. It's, good, it's okay. It's fine. I'm silly. I get <laughs> Thank you, Laura. That's sweet. All right. So, right now, it's super, super, super wet. So, um, I'm not going to, <laughs> I say that I'm probably, yeah, I'm going to touch it. Um, I'm going to do my best. I always say that I'm like, I'm not going to touch it. And then I end up going right on top. Okay. So I'm going to let it sit for a moment. Let it dry a bit. Cause it's pretty, pretty thick before I try to put any sort of detail on here. Because if I try to do anything, it's going to, um, to look really weird. Ah, Patty says he needs a bigger belly. You know what? Okay, Patty, I'm I'm going for it. I'm giving him a bigger belly. I'm gonna listen to your suggestion, and we're gonna we're gonna do that. Oh, oh mine looks like a parrot now. The face. I'm giving him. A oh, that's looking good. Bigger belly. Oh, pa yeah, he does look better. You know what? You got it, Patty. That was it. I like him more now. Me too. <laughs> good call, Patty. There we go. That's why it's nice. So share your points. It makes it better. I love it. Now I like the guy. All right. Okay, now I'm not going to touch it. So it can dry a bit. I'm not touching mine either. I need a break. It's tricky. I'm stressed. You're stressed. Don't be stressed. <laughs> no, this face is not right. I can't even see you. Really. <laughs> so if, if it's being weird, like depending on what the background is, so like right here, for example, like... The great thing about where this guy's head is, yeah. he's right on the white, so I could potentially go in with a bit of white and kind of trim him down yeah. or change it up if I need to. Yeah. So depending on where your, um, where the heads or the body of your birds are, mm -hmm. you could do the same with the background. You could try to mimic whatever that color is close by. Even if you honestly just do white, and then you can always just put some blue on top, and then that will give it a nice... Um, it will kind of it won't look as harsh and it will kind of balance it out. I've done that before for some other 
um, silhouettes I've done. And I'm not sure what it is. You could look at it. He's a dude now. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Patty says he's a, he's a dude now. Right. I like it. It's true. Yeah, he does look better. They're nicer now. I like it. All right, maybe you put more birds. There's like a whole row of them. It's a party. Bird party, obviously pre-COVID, because you can't have <laughs> everyone that close normally. <laughs> but anyways, okay, cool. So let this dry. Come on. You can also use a hair dryer if you want things to dry faster too, and that can dry down. I do not have that going. And I did put a lot of paint on there. Wow, it's really thick. Okay, I wonder if I make it a little bit like that. You can see both on there. There you go, guys. You can see both. Okay, and the next step, once it goes, then we're going to put in some details. So when you look at the original image, um, I think I'm going to do the white. No, maybe not. Maybe I'll do the black first, actually. Yeah, we're going to go in and we're going to put the black. And there's black on the head. There's the eye. And then there's black that basically um, outlines the wing and it kind of creates like a, a bit of a pattern? pattern, I suppose. Yeah. So it's like thinner and then it kind of is a bit thicker at the bottom there. So we're going to be doing that on both sides. And then we're going to put a little bit on the tail as well. And there's also a little, little, little touch of black just around the neck here. Um, I think it's just to differentiate it from the background more than the actual color. So that's what we're going to be doing next. And then when we're done that, we're going to put the white highlights and put the orange beak. And then the birds will be complete. But you don't want to do that when it's wet because it's all going to run together. If I really want to do it now because I don't like to wait. <laughs> I'm impatient. Do you want me to get your hair dryer? No, no, no. no. That's okay. Don't worry. Everyone's probably there. Everyone's probably doing theirs anyway, so I usually go a little fast. So I think everyone will be okay with the waiting for a moment, moment or two. Cool. Yeah, I'm really digging the trees now a lot more. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm digging the trees. It's good. Yeah, that palette knife really did not was not my friend. I was not a fan of it. I have to play with that a little bit more to get the hang of it. I saw another uh, painting party person do um, birch trees, doing it with like a palette knife or like um, uh, some kind of hard cardboard or whatnot, and she did a fantastic mm. job. Yeah, so we're gonna do that in a moment or two. It's getting, it's drying, it's drying. I'm being optimistic. It's still really wet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if yours is already dry, if you went a little thinner on the paint than I did, feel free to start um, putting in the black to define the uh, the wings and the tail and the head and the eye. So we want to start. I'm I'm gonna I'm starting to dip it in black. We'll see. I might start on top of the wet yellow and then get annoyed and stop probably. Okay, so I'm just making my black nice and inky smooth. So it will go on nicely. And I think I'm gonna start with the tail because the tail is the one part that is more dry than the others. So it basically, you just put a black line on the tail, and then it kind of... Oh, that's nice. Kind of want to have it... That, and I'm okay if it's not super perfect, like the lines being super crisp, because it's a feather, so it can be more feathery, I suppose. It doesn't bother me as much as it normally does when it's not super straight. Okay. But it's really up to you. Okay, I'm gonna do this side as well. Okay, 
cool. There we go. In where I want. <laughs> I'm gonna place, not plop in. That's hilarious. That's my new saying now. Okay, I'm gonna put the eye right there. On this guy, I'm gonna put the eye right there. On that guy. Hmm. I feel like there's too much paint on that. Okay. I feel like I just gave him a wig. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is gonna be weird. like attach to their eye. It's kind of like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like in the inspiration image it does. I don't know. Ooh, I shouldn't have done that. That dipped in the yellow. That makes them look weird. I don't know. I might separate that because that looks kind of funky. Oh, I think see. you're right. I I know, you know your birds. You're supposed to tell me how it's supposed to be, Linda. <laughs> Linda's really into her birds. I finches. <laughs> I didn't even know. When I put the picture up, I was like, yellow birds. And Linda was like, they're finches. I was like, oh, okay. So now I'm calling them finches. <laughs> <laughs> like, got it. Okay. Actually, it being wet still, it's kind of working in my benefit to blend it kind of yeah, nicely, nice. so that's kind of okay. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. it's what I'm trying to get my black to go into the yellow but every time it goes into the yellow it's pulling the yellow so if you're doing what I'm doing which is working on wet paint which I again probably should have waited you are gonna need to kind of like clear off your brush when you get some of the yellow paint on it and then grab more black paint to bring it into the yellow paint if you want to be painting on color that's still wet. Okay, it's a little bit darker up there than I wanted, but that's okay. Thank you, my eyes too big. Your eyes too big? Yeah. Let it dry and you can tone yes. it down with yellow that's after. True. Okay, and then I'm gonna get a little bit of white so I can kind of 
kind of the same thing, but like you highlight it instead of having the black. So we want the belly to have a little bit of a highlight. Like that. On both sides and this guy's belly. You know what? That, I can still see the branch. I'm just going to put yellow there and darken it up a little bit. Because really, you shouldn't be able to see the branch behind his belly. It's kind of strange. Okay, there you go. Okay, let's go back and get some more white. Okay, and we're going to put some white here, like... So where the black and the yellow meet, there's a little bit of white. And when you're doing this again, if it's a little wet like mine still is, you kind of have to keep going back and putting more white paint on your brush or else it's going to keep picking up the colors behind it and then it's not going to look well. I am just mixing it a little bit because the white and the black are still a little wet and I'm just kind of blending them in a little bit. It looks cute like that, I think. All right. Hmm. So Canwall is asking, how should we preserve our painting so it doesn't fade away? And should we wrap it in something for no scratches? So yeah, if you are using a board if it's not going to be put up and you're going to be storing it um, you could put um, like parchment paper between them so that it protects the painting in that way um, especially if you're going to be stacking them or having them in storage in that way um, if you're going to be putting it up and you just want to protect it because obviously there'll be dust and whatever else to get on it um, there is like clear acrylic um, like spray that you can buy is it acrylic I don't know if it's acrylic, it was for acrylic, but it's like a, a clear spray that you can spray on top that can um, protect your painting as well. So that would be my suggestion. There might be some other ways to do it, but that's Google. what I would suggest. Yeah, Google can help too, of course. But yeah, for me, I would say those two ways. I've done it before where I sprayed it. I forgot what it was called. It was like a clear, like, it's like a spray thing. It was in the, it was at like the art store, probably in the acrylic section. It's like almost looks like a, a can of spray paint, but it's to be able to seal paintings and other things. So hopefully that helps. Thank you, Mila. All right. So what else do we want to do with these little birdie birds? We want to, there is another little highlight I found. There's a little bit around like just here. I know it's just a little white in the original image, kind of around their heads ish. Like that ish. Cool. And then where else is there some more white? I think then there's some orange, just a little bit under there. So if you have orange, cool. If you don't, um, which I'm not going to mix, I'm not going to grab it, but I'm going to get some red and I'm going to put my, some red in my yellow. Wow. Okay. I got a little bit of black still on my brush and that did not make orange. Let me tell you. <laughs> okay. Let's get some red. Let's mix it into some yellow. If you're using dollar store paints like I am, sometimes when you mix red and yellow, you get like peach. Um, <laughs> so they're not like pure colors. That's the that's the kicker of using cheaper things. But like I said, I go with it. It's all right. Peach it is. Okay, so let me just add a little bit. In here and then I'm gonna go back over with my yellow just to tone it down a bit because it's a little much I'm just gonna add a little bit of 
bit of a shadow to his neck, back of his neck, and then underneath there. And then we're also going to do the beak. So I'm going to do the beak, and I'm going to go back with the yellow to fix it up a little bit. The beak. Just the big beak. Oh, I think this beak looks really weird. <laughs> Kind of does look like a two climb like that, I guess. Let's see, squeeze it. I'm gonna go with it. Have some ranch? Sorry? I have some of the ranch, please. Um, I just mixed red and yellow together. Oh, if you want the pre mixed one, here you go. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Because I had red still in my. Oh, so do I. Okay, let me try that. Yeah, I just figured. I was like, eh, I don't need much of it. Yeah. To me, it looked very pinkish, but now it, it is looking more orange. That's good. I think sometimes when you, I don't know, for me, sometimes when I look at the color, like, I, I don't see it right away. It's like it, it yeah. looks more pink. Maybe I'm looking at too much pink flower, so it kind of, you know, has that. Have you guys seen that where, like, if you look at, like, a picture of these, like, shoes, some people see green and some people see them pink? Or, like, that dress thing with, like, the blue, like, it depends on the side of your brain that you know, is more dominant, and apparently you see different colors. It's pretty cool. It just made me think of that. <laughs> Funny, my husband and I see it differently. But I'm not actually not the creative one. My Apparently, it's my other brain. My logical brain is the one that <laughs> is more dominant, where my husband is actually the... Uh, he's more the creative one. So that was kind of funny. Oh, yeah, and then there's a bit of a... Um, like a black line here, and I think it's just to define. And... Oh, he has no neck. It's a straight line. It's fine. That looks a little bit weird. All right. There you go. Okay, so I think the beaks are kind of funky. I'm not like a super fan of them. I kind of do want to fix them a little bit, maybe make them a bit smaller. Look a little bit weird. But whatever. I'm not going to stress about that. All right. So those are the way my birds look. I think I'm pretty much done. So I think I'm going to add my initials to the painting. Because I tend to forget that, like, a lot. I'm going to put them on. You can't see that because you're still looking at the birds. But I will zoom out momentarily so you can see the entire painting. Okay. So, let us zoom out. Ta-da! There we go. That looks super cute. I'm going to move my paint palette as well. So, let's look again. So, there is our inspiration image. So, we have the, the two finches on this birch tree branch. Has lovely pink blossoms all over it. And here is my version of it. And I can't wait to see all of your guys' version because that is really the fun part to see how everyone made it their own. I want to see if anyone ended up putting like a different animal, a cat, or you kept it creepy, or you have different colors, or whatever you did. Blue jays instead of finches, whatever. Um, that'd be really great to see. So yeah. So yeah, so thanks guys. Thanks for painting along with me tonight. And um, again on Saturday, there'll be three more options that you will be able to choose from. And um, this week should be quite fun as well. So on Saturday around noon, that post will come up. You can vote for your favorite option. And then you, um, yeah, we'll see which one gets the most votes by the Tuesday after at noon. And then at that point, I'll post the winner for next Wednesday night. And we'll keep going on from there. All right, guys? Um, and I know last week with some of you guys, I did mention that I might be changing the days to Tuesdays. But I think I'm going to stick with the Wednesday nights. My work schedule changed again, which is fantastic. So um, the Wednesday nights are still going to work for me for the paint party. So we're going to keep that rolling, I think, through October. Um, so, yeah. So it should be good. So thank you very much. Um, I can't wait to see your pictures. So please post as well. Here's my picture again. They look pretty cute. Thank you. I'm pretty happy with it.
You're welcome. Do you want to show yours too, Linda? Okay. All it's right. Not. Here's Linda's picture, so you guys can check it out too. Look. Look how pretty. It's not even on the branch. <laughs> I love it. Oh yeah, they're kind of in front of the branch. Oh, That's all right. They're chilling. I'll put another branch there. So pretty. <laughs> I love it. There you go. Thank so you. yeah. So can't wait to see all of yours. Have a great night, guys. Bye.